I've been playing, writing music since I was 16. The songs were super shitty. Or if, if I can't say that word, the songs were really bad. <laughs> you can say it. Okay, the songs are shit. <laughs> Seth Jones, all the way from Crandall, Texas, join us with Bandwagon TV's Joyride. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing fantabulous. Wait, I'm sorry, say that again. Fantabulous. 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 The word is the other one you said. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, hey, I appreciate you taking the time, joining us. We're in the White Lightning. We're cruising around. We're in East Texas. I'm not too familiar. There's so many towns here in this state. But I'm glad that we're finally meeting up and uh, you can share all your good music. I, I, just for people that, you know, learning who you are, a little bit about your music, if you can, sir, let us know name, where you're from, your musical influences, and a little bit about what you've been up to because you are an extremely busy man. We just caught you off work. So let us know what you're doing right now in 2021. Well, I am Seth Jones. I am a native East Texan. There's a small, well, most people know where Tyler, Texas is. Yes. Close to Tyler is Henderson, Texas. That's less known. And then outside of Henderson is a forest. And there's a, a town, I put air quotes, called Price, Texas. And that's where I'm from. I grew up in the woods, like, for real, the woods. And I had a kid in high school, which basically destroyed every dream I ever had immediately. And uh, then I went on to work my ass off in various blue collar jobs that I hated. And eventually, through much hard work and persistence by me and my wife, we, uh, we made it to where we were no longer extremely poor and unhappy. Although I'm far from rich and far from fulfilled, I'm no longer super poor and unhappy. Uh, we live in Crandall, Texas now, which is right outside of the Metroplex, right outside of Dallas specifically. Not a big fan of the city. Once again, I grew up in the woods, and you can't beat that. But we live near Dallas so that we can work in Dallas. And I work in physical therapy. As much as I know about songwriting, I know as much about the human body as well. So if you have any questions about physiology or kinesiology, I'm with you on that one. I can help you out. I've been playing, writing music since I was 16. The songs were super shitty. Or if, if I can't say that word, the songs were really bad. <laughs> you can say it. <laughs> okay, the songs were shit. And, uh, I thought they were good and if you go through life writing songs you write shitty songs that you think are good and if you keep going you realize that those were shitty <laughs> and you keep doing that over and over and over until you finally get to the point where you know the song is good like now i know my songs are good and looking back that con confirms my growth right now there's i'm sure there i'm only 35 i've only been writing for what 10 15 years whatever i'm sure when you've been writing for for 30 years, you hit some other level. Like aging, aging in general, when you're 18, you think you finally figured it all out, right? And as we know, you turn 28, you realize, damn, I was an idiot at 18. So it's the same thing with songwriting. You keep having these, a, a series of epiphanies every few years. And uh, anyway, I'm happy with where I'm at right now, and I definitely want to keep getting better. I've been writing songs for a very long time, and to me, I'm not, I'm not super concerned with the genre. However, it does help. I've learned it helps a lot if you have an idea of what you want the song to sound like during the writing process. I used to just write the damn song with no regard to where it would be played on radio and things like that. I finally I finally decided I want to try to write country songs. You know, I love I've always loved country music. I'll get to the influences in a minute. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, uh, just just I, speak, I, I brother. Wanted to, I wanted to write country music and that really helped my songwriting because now there's at least a rail. Right, I'm on a rail. I can do whatever I want on the train. I can hang off the side of the train. I can stand on the top of the train and, you know, flip everyone the bird. But I'm on a, I'm on a track, right? So that really helped me out. It settled me down. I have an ADD mind. So that really settled me down as a songwriter. Now, influences, man, so many. I like, I like almost everybody else listen to multiple genres of music. I've listened to rap, hip hop, old country, new country, classic rock, 
emo, pop punk, pop punk. I love Bowling for Soup, one of my favorite bands. Old 97s is my favorite band. And Old 97s are, is a great band. Rock. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're my favorite of all time. They're rock and country and kind of a, and some pop. Mm -hmm. and they kind of make, it's, a, it's an amalgam of all of those things. Yeah. But uh, on a personal note, well, we talked a little bit before the interview. We did. It's, it sounds like we have some similar tastes. Yes. The Old 97s are my favorite band of all time. Bayside is one of my favorites. Love Bayside. Um, and coincidentally, probably my two favorite songwriters of all time are Red Miller and Anthony Ranieri. Wow. Those are probably my two favorite. I know everyone says Merle because he's incredible, or Willie. You know, they, they, they bring up these legendary country songwriters, but the way Anth the way Anthony Ranieri spins a web of spite and anger, like that, that song, They're Not Horses, They're Unicorns, that's one of the most spiteful, pissed-off songs I've ever heard. And, and Rick Miller, he writes songs that only he can write, and I love songs like that because they're, they've got personal touches, and you can tell he's got a weird, smart brain. I love shit like that, so that's... That's uh, although I have influences from all over. Those are my two favorite songwriters, and and you can I think you can hear that in some of my songs. You can. You have an, You had an album I think last year. Is that uh, whiskey? Whiskey attitude was a sixteen track double album. Yeah. Which was a bad idea, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the past. Good. I think he would say. <laughs> But I could tell a little bit of that the writing and the the songs. I, it felt like it at least. Well, the opening track to that album was "Lonely, Lonely Self." Of course, I didn't write the song trying to copy the old '97s. But when it was done, and after we tracked it, I thought, man, that really sounds like "Won't Be Home." That old '97 song, "You're a Rattle Trap Tonight." That one, which I, I was fine with, because I love the band and the song and then and I don't want to name drop I don't have many names to drop I'm not <laughs> just drop them cool. just drop it I talk I talk to Ken Bethay sometimes the lead guitar player for the old 97s wow like we kind of became kind of friends not mm -hmm. close friends but I've talked to him several times hung out with him which is nuts because they're my favorite band ever and it's just a weird thing but he told me I don't remember the song he mentioned but he said it sounds more like this song and it was a, a different old 97 song that sounded nothing like Won't Be Home I don't know why he thinks that, but I trust him because, you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get in connection with him? He's from East Texas. He still has a connection there. I think he's got a, a little bit of family <clears throat> left in East. He's from Chapel Hill specifically, which okay. is right by Tyler. It's like a Tyler suburb, if you could call it that. And he became Facebook friends with my wife. I'm not sure why. I think they had mutual friends, and then he was just like, yeah, click. And he actually commented on some of her stuff. So, like, he would, I guess, Ken Bethay, just like all other normal people, just scrolls through and fucks <laughs> yeah. that shit, you know? <laughs> and friended Ken Bethay, because why not try, right? He accepted it. And I was like, cool, I'm friends with Ken Bethay on Facebook. End of story. Well, I posted, I'm not just a songwriter, I'm a writer. I like to write stuff. Like, I like to write these big, inspirational or big, thoughtful or big funny posts whatever and i wrote some inspirational one about not giving up and i'm i'm nowhere near where i want to be but i've come so far and you should never quit because you never know what could happen he messaged me on facebook messenger and was like man i was inspired by that that was really heartfelt if you ever want to talk about the music business or anything let me know and i said yeah i would love to of course that would be great and he said i can't do it right now i'm about to go play frisbee golf uh but we'll talk soon and i said cool i appreciate it i I thought I would never talk to him again because you know how that goes. Yeah. They're inspired in a moment and then they're like, let's hook up. And mm -hmm. then it never happens. But sure enough, about two hours later, right after the Frisbee golf, he messaged me. He said, hey, what's your phone number? Do you have time to talk? I was like, yeah. Wow. So he, he called me and we talked for over an hour about all sorts of stuff. And, and uh, that's where we had that conversation. And he even hooked me up. He told me to work with, are you familiar with, you probably aren't, but are you familiar with Salim Norala? No. So. Salim produced Rhett Miller's first self-titled album, the one where he's, he's, his head and it's green in the background. And he also produced Blame It On Gravity, the album. Okay. And both of the Grand Theater albums. Wow. So he's their friend. Yeah. He's their producer. And I'm working on rock songs with Salim right now. I've got three of them damn near done. And it's really cool to work with Salim and I'm work I'm gonna work with John Pettigo. He's friends with them and he might be getting get this. 
he might be getting Philip Peoples to do the drums and Ken to do some of the guitar work. So I'll have half the old nice band backing me. <laughs> this is a, amazing. How does it? So is this a bit surreal? I mean. Being you know what? growing up too, I mean, like me, I love them, and now you're actually working with them. I have, I've been depressed for a long time, like forever. I've chronic depression, mm -hmm. and I've gotten to the point. I've gotten to the suicidal point where I vividly imagine. There, there's a way you can imagine things, and then there's a way if you're capable, which actors do this a lot, where they imagine something so vividly that they cry, yeah, and they can get to a scene. Well, I can do shit like that. I just don't like doing it. Mm -hmm. But I did it because I was at I was at the end of my rope, and I really wanted I wanted to end it. And I imagined the gun going into my mouth, and even like little details, like I could taste the iron, and it was cold, and it scraped my teeth on the way in, and I felt the fullness in my mouth of the gun, and I felt the the point of the iron iron sight on my tongue, and this was all just about imagining it vividly. And then I opened my eyes, and I thought. The only thing left was to pull the trigger and like what I wanted to really do that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I did that shit and I was, I, I came to the conclusion that I really don't care if I die. I want to live for my family because their lives would be ruined. I would, I would, I would ruin a lot of lives if I did do that. But I, I decided as far as like just me, if someone came in my house right now and said I'm gonna shoot you, I'd say, well, shoot, motherfucker! Like, why are you tell, why are you talking about it? Like, I don't care. But and that's not, I'm not saying that to be sad or depressing. It's just, it is what it is. Like, I'm happy right now. I'm just saying I wouldn't care if they did that. I'm not scared of it. So when that happened, I, uh, I came. But my life kind of changed, or my mindset kind of changed. And I think that, at least in my case, and maybe in other people's cases, I have not done a, a study, I believe that once you've gotten, you've crossed that threshold mentally, you never, ever get too low or too high. It's like something, like your, your, your extreme, your level, your ability to achieve the same type of passion you had when you got your first, when you kissed your first girl, or, you know, made love with her for the first time or went like went to a mountaintop you know those those things that people romanticize yeah those those don't matter anymore you don't you don't care about dying you don't care about seeing like if someone teleported me to the top of mount fuji wherever the hell that is i just picked a mountain i'm bad at geography and i like saw the most beautiful sunset i, I wouldn't give a shit i was i could just google this like <laughs> i just wouldn't care it's, it's you can say that's called being dead inside, mm -hmm. but I'm actually happy and content and fine. I just don't have that super high or super low. So when all this stuff with Ken was happening, like I said, I understand. It's yeah. my favorite my favorite band of all time. It's their freaking lead guitar player. That's one of four musicians in that band, and I'm talking to him. I even hung out with him while we were recording the rock album, and I didn't I didn't care. I mean, I cared, but I just viewed him as just another person, like mm -hmm. a cool person. Like, I've, I tell people, I could meet anybody. LeBron James, Donald Trump, Tom Cruise, just name anyone. They could walk in, and I wouldn't really give a shit. I wouldn't hyperventilate. I wouldn't get nervous. They're just another person to me, and that's not... That's not a cocky thing. It's it is what it is. I'm not saying it's because I'm special. <laughs> it's just, no, it's. I think you're right. I think it's a bit of reality. They are as human as you and I are. Like you yeah, just said, they're scrolling they, they, through Facebook, liking one of your wife's posts because that's what people do. Right there, and honestly, most people all about is I do bodybuilding too, mm -hmm. not professionally, mm -hmm. like not not steroids and shit, but I do it because it's healthy and it's mentally super healthy. People don't realize that. That's why I got into it, probably mainly. I'm not one to diminish people's accomplishments. Oftentimes, these people that seem larger than life, they're products of system. They're not doing anything that me and you couldn't do. We could do it too if we got became ingrained in that system, put our minds to it, said, I don't care about being a family man or doing whatever I used to do. I'm just going to be a fucking actor and win the awards. You know, you have to get into that. It's the same thing with politics. I'm going to be a senator. I'm going to be the president. And that's all they give a shit about. They're not better at it than you. I mean, obviously, look at our politicians. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> They're not good at it. They just decided.
decided that's what they're going to do. So no, they're not more important than you. They're not more talented than you. They're just a person that got on that path and stayed on it, mm-hmm. and now they're doing it. So I'm not diminishing anything. It's just that I see what they are. They're just someone that that's what they did. They decided to do it. I just doesn't make them special. You know, Seth, I knew you were deep. I went through your Instagram and some of your stories, and there's some talks, you know, with alcohol and things like that. But you know, I'm just one so happy that you shared all of that with us just having a deep thought i think people can appreciate that sometimes we think these things but we just don't say them out loud well i feel like the I, i've been telling people this a lot in the past few months i'm not sure why maybe because it's intensifying but the world it's always since we've been alive very least and probably decades before that. The world is becoming more and more, not just America, America probably started this shit, but the world is becoming more and more shallow, plastic, superficial, just what do they look like? Are they wearing makeup? Like, no one gives a shit. When I say no one, I mean proverbially, essentially, no one cares if the song is well written. They're like, is his voice good? Like, that's what they care about. Or is she hot? Does she have big boobs? Like, that's what people really care about. They don't really care. Is the song written well? Or uh, is the, the product made by hand? And is it one of a kind? They don't care. Everything's very plastic. I feel like at some point, there's a threshold, and we keep getting closer and closer more plastic more shallow more superficial eventually it's going to get to the point where everyone sees like dude what are we doing everyone's the same every one of our singers is on stage doing this stuff tilting their head like it's karaoke and it just all seems plastic and shitty and i think that the people that are being real and deep maybe at some point will be appreciated like they used to be I don't know if that's going to happen. And I think it is. It, I think we're I th- honestly just doing, look at this show. It's running on a zero budget. I'm using my cell phone. We're using cardboard boxes here. People, I'm telling you right now, appreciate authenticity. It's going a long way. I'm telling you right now, I, 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 this is my personal feeling and why I wanted to really get into country musicians like yourself and have them talk because I feel like, and I could be wrong, but just looking at the way our, our trajectory of where we're going, the authenticity and the real music will come out again. You know, I know we've gone through, you know, you can the synthesizers and the computer, but anyways, I just, uh, everything that you're saying is really resonating with me, and I think you're on to something. Well, not to hijack the interview furthermore, but like I said, I can F and talk, man. <laughs> um, there are people, believe it or not, people taking advantage and manipulating this resurgence of depth and real <clears throat> heartfelt create creativity and music because I feel like there are people that are really authentic and deep, top-notch, top-tier creativity and well-written songs. And they're getting, you've got people that are significantly worse, more plastic, more shallow, and they're attaching themselves to that genre or that scene. And this has been happening forever. It happened, are you familiar with, familiar with the Texas country scene? Well, like, to, to an extent, yeah. Like, honestly, I just wash my hands of it. I don't even really think about it unless I'm doing an interview and talking about it. Well, here you are, you're, you're in an interview. And talking about it. And Seth, I appreciate this. You know, I really do because I really enjoy this deep conversation. Unfortunately, we are on a time limit. And so I do have to pull over the white lightning. And so I'm hoping, with all of this said, you are ready for the lightning round. I'm as ready as I could possibly be. Well, that, that is... doesn't mean I'm ready, but I'm as ready as I could be. <laughs> oh, good. Well, there's no other way. All right, here we go. <laughs> we pulled over the white lightning. And like we say to all musicians, if they have a local business that they like to promote. And so Seth, I gotta ask you, do you have a local business that you'd like to promote with us today? I do. Uh, there's a there's a town called Canton, Texas. Canton, Texas. Kind of like Canton, Ohio, but it's in Texas. It's considered East Texas, right off of Interstate 20. And they have something called, I think it's First Monday. It's the weekend of the first Monday of each month. And it's Canton Trade Days. It's a giant flea market. It's like half the damn town. Really cool. It's, it's famous amongst in East Texas. And there's even people in Dallas that know about it, I've, I've learned. Uh, but it's really popular. There's a venue there, an outdoor venue. It's a stage in a little building, which is just the green room for musicians to put their stuff in. And it's a little stage. 
It's called the Mathis Family Store. And I know the guy that started it. He's a friend of mine. His name is Colton Mathis. He's a super good, genuine guy. You won't see him pop country ever, I promise you. He's very bluesy and just great singer, songwriter, one of the best guitar players I've ever seen. But he started it, and it's if you're looking for something the opposite of shallow, plastic, fake bullshit, it, the Mathis Country Store is for you because he, he, has, he wants nothing to do with that. He wants authentic artists who write their songs and sing with passion. Uh, it reminds me of there's no press. They're not trying to make money. They just do it. That's kind of how that is. And he, it's not even really super monetized. You don't pay to get in. I think he's got shirts you can buy to support it. But it's just really damn cool. So if anyone is in Canton for the for the Canton trade days, or if you just want to make a plan to go there, go to the the Mathis Family Store. It's on. It's in an area called Canton, the mountain. Uh, but look, just ask around for the Mathis Family Store, and you'll find it. And it's it's a really cool experience. I've played there several times. Me and my buddies, and I still play there from time to time. Good. Well, I can't wait to promote this. This is a, I, I've never one. I've never obviously been there, but. It, I definitely love to check that out. Yeah, you like it. So it's cool. It's a very cool venue. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for sharing. All right, Seth. Here we go. Lightning round. Lightning quick. You're here because you wanted the tough questions. So first question is whiskey or beer? Young twenty year old Seth beer. Right now, definitely whiskey in my landslide. And I figured you'd say that, but I wanted to ask you what type of whiskey. Man, I like whiskey so much, and there's so many great ones. There's a whole world of it, just like beer, but. I will say, if I have a lot of money at the time, <laughs> yes, um, I would say that the Forrester 1920 Prohibition is a really good sipping whiskey. My The best on-hand whiskey, mm -hmm. you know how most people, they're like, I always have a bottle of Jack or, you know, popular one, Jim Beam. Jim, you know? yep, Jim. Uh, my, my, my favorite on-hand whiskey is Wild Turkey 101, and coincidentally, Wild Turkey is my favorite distillery. they got Long Branch, they've got Rare Breed, they've got some really good different tiered whiskeys. Uh, also, Woodford Reserve is great, Buffalo Trace, Eagle Rare, there's so many good ones. But short answer, if you said, hey, what whiskey do you always want to have on hand? Wild Turkey 101. I love Wild Turkey. I'm more of a, a Jameson's fan, but Wild Turkey is... Love Jameson. Love Jameson. Yeah, it took me a while. I think I had to get older, like you just said, with age to appreciate Wild Turkey, but it is pretty good stuff. Love it. All right. So when we, when you showed up and you showed up with a, a sleeveless shirt, it just it fit exactly what I needed. Because and not only that, you say you you like to stay in shape, and I notice that you're on stage sometimes with a sleeveless shirt. So I need to ask you again the important questions here of Bandwagon TV: bicep curl or bench press? What you got? Do you know Do you know much about bodybuilding or working out? Uh, I mean, no, not in terms of professionally. No. Well, those are completely different. <laughs> <laughs> Groups, but oh, I know, I know that. Well, I guess maybe I should have said some dips. Should know, I said dips? Some people don't know that they're, they're working out different stuff. But uh, I will say, like in terms of like, what do I like doing better? Yeah, I guess like you're going to the gym. You got one workout. What are you doing? To answer your question specifically, I prefer the curls. To broaden it out just a tad, when I, when my brain, when I hear curls or bench press, I hear, do you prefer uh, biceps and back day, or do you prefer chest and triceps day? Yes. That's that's what I heard in my my brain, and I would say I love I love chest and triceps because I'm a I have natural I have natural triceps. Before I started working out, I had some definition in my tricep, you know, like more than other people. I have a like if I was a boxer, I'd be a jabber. Like I would have a mean jab just naturally. I wouldn't have a great hook, you know, because that's chest and biceps, but my jab would be mean. But I love doing chest and triceps. I love pushing. Uh, I love how much weight I can do on the pull downs. I can I can lift every damn plate on that thing. Like I could fat stack, pull it all down. I love chest and triceps. Second place would be shoulders. I love shoulder presses and things like that. And then back in, I love biceps. Not a huge fan of back. I don't like pulling. It's, <laughs> What it's about just, leg day? You're forgetting the leg day. I never, first of all, I never <laughs> skip leg day. But, like most people, I'm not a huge fan of it. Well, good stuff. All right. So now you're in the white lightning. You've taken over. You're behind the wheel. You need a co-pilot, coast to coast, musician, dead or alive. Who do you got? I'm overthinking this one because I know that most famous musicians were constantly on meth or something. And that's the truth, by the way. I've read lots of biographies. <laughs> Most of the legends were coked up and messed up. Makes for an interesting road trip. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, but they also all kind of act the same when they're on messed up. I, I might roll with Chris Christopherson. 
Ah, that's a good one. I, I'm, I'm waiting for someone to say that. That's great. He's extremely intelligent. Mm -hmm. Road scholar. Yeah. Road scholar. But he's intelligent. You know, there's different forms of intelligence. Yeah. For example, if you only judge intelligence by well, math and numbers and things like that, I'd be a, a fucking idiot. A complete idiot. But if you judge it off of like words, emotional intelligence, and yeah. the wisdom, being able to the riffraff from something and really see it for what it is, I might be a genius. But Chris Christopherson seems to have lots of different forms of intelligence, so he's just super versatile with his his brain, you know, and uh, I think it'd be interesting to dissect things with him, you know, like debate each other in a, in a smart way, not in a combative way. He's Chris Christopherson. That's the easy answer. If Chris is going through your playlist on a, on your phone, is there going to be a song that would surprise us or a band? I mean, you've already kind of mentioned a few of them. He'd probably be shocked by the emo that came on. <laughs> um, yeah, I love... Bayside, I love The Used, Taking Back Sunday. Chemical Romance, I was surprised when you said that. My Chemical Romance? Yeah. Yeah, I love My Chemical Romance. And I will say this too, they're the Black Parade album. In my mind, and I'm not a Rolling Stones writer who's heard every album, you know, analyzed every album, so my opinion doesn't mean much. I think the Black Parade album has to be one of the top 10 greatest rock albums of all time. Surely. I, mean, I can't see anything being much better than that album. So I love that album. It gets me amped up. The first two tracks, I forgot what they're called, Dead and something else. Uh, the When it rolls from track one to track two seamlessly, you got that drum roll and then the Chuck Berry guitar riff. Mm -hmm. That amps me up hard. So uh, I think I think Chris Cro Chris Chris Alverson would be shocked by the emo on my playlist. I appreciate you sharing. Lightning round, you did great. But now this is on you. You had a new single, Forever on Your Flame, which was and I if I mispronounce her name, is it Hokick? Hannah Hokick? It's Hokit. It's Hannah Hokit, Forever on Your Flame. That was the duet that we've been pushing. I'm actually gonna do do us both a favor, okay? Yeah. I will announce something. I will announce my next EP. I haven't told anyone outside of like a small, I've told four people in the world. You want me to announce it? You want me to do that on bandwagon? Let's do it. Let's, yeah, big news. We love this stuff. August the 13th. And like I said, I haven't even made my, I'm going to make my social media posts for pre-saves and pre-orders a week prior. Uh, but on August 13th, I'm releasing a four song EP. Four really good songs. I love them. They make me very happy when I hear them. And, um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. It's called the, it's called Heart Unchained. That's what the EP is. And to give even more additional news, I've got, I've got two four song EPs after that at some point, at least. Like I'm gonna start doing four song EPs every now and then, as opposed to double albums, which was a bad idea. I told you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, August thirteenth, four brand new songs and EP that I, I think people are gonna really like. Hey, that's Seth right there. Look at that. Seth Jones, breaking big news. news. That's breaking news. I'm gonna have a little sound clip for that. All right, well, we gotta kick you out. I, <laughs> on that note, on that note, we gotta kick you out. Seth, is there a song you can play for us today? I can absolutely do that. I love it. I appreciate it, sir, going through Texas and East Texas at that and just telling us everything. You got really deep right there and we really appreciate what you have to say. And I'm. Um, your wife, too. She's amazing. She kind of sent us a message. So, you know, we're big fans of the Joneses. And uh, we... Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and breaking news can't get any better than that. But, sir, go ahead whenever you're ready.
all can be the same day. Like I'm leaving, but I ain't even there. Your eyes are in my head, your hairs are in my bed. I am lost ever since you went away. I am lost ever since you went away. Unchained and the doggy door opening about eight times. There you go, that's Seth Jones. But we're still on the road and we gotta kick you out. So, Seth, man, it's been real. Thanks for having me. Rock and roll, boys and girls. Yeah. Take a picture, love. This could be our lucky day. Oh, yeah, you might take a picture, love. This could be our lucky day